we're going to start from this step since there's a bunch of videos that kind of show you how to get the motherboard out on a Fitbit Blaze, but after that I can't find a decent video that shows you how to do these tricky steps. Um, after you get these screws, these three screws, one, two, three, out of the motherboard, there's a glued down little vibration module there. Again, it's round and it's partially hidden, but you have to pry up. You have to use a spudger and pry it up and release it, and that will release the motherboard. I found not a lot of videos even really described it that well, but it's pretty stuck on there. But then the motherboard will be loosened. And then finally from there, you can do the same with the battery and work your way around it and pry up the glue that holds the battery carefully go around you know a couple times and just lift each one and then the whole motherboard module will come out so that's I haven't seen past that step here so I'm gonna keep going here this little tray hopefully this will help because I didn't find I haven't found any good videos with this this little tray has two little retaining clips on the side here like here and here and what I've already done is use a spudger and unclip it and after you unclip it this will come loose and then you can take the tray out finally after searching for quite a long time I haven't found this step so I'm gonna do the step from here to remove the actual LCD display see we got a cracked one you want to push lightly in each corner on the L the old LCD and I've done this a bit already but let's see if I can do it here oh, we're gonna pause it real quick and we'll skip ahead but we wanna we wanna push on each corner of it to loosen it because it oops there appears to be a ring of glue around the outer display that holds it into place so loosening that is tricky but if you're replacing the LCD it's hopefully already broken and you don't have to worry about cracking the LCD but give it some pressure in each corner you'll feel it loosen and then the front should come out all right so we pushed out and in our case our glass is broken so we've been left with kind of this ring of glass that's broken and so we're gonna have to clean that out and prepare this for our new screen to sit in and we'll see what we got for options for adhesive after we clean this up so we'll clean up that tray and get rid of this old broken LCD screen all right we scraped off about three quarters we still got to do this part but it's very difficult to uh, do this cleanly I definitely recommend doing this over the trash uh, little pieces of glass will fly everywhere recommend eye protection um, like I said this is the pretty strong adhesive they have around the whole ring here and we'll do something about that after I'm gonna get the rest of this glass off of this side and we'll go from there all right, here's where we lucked out. As we started taking out that last bit of glass, the adhesive started coming up. So here, if we can go, if we can, if we can have the adhesive kind of stay together, I don't know if I can do it one-handed. See how the adhesive comes up in a strip like that? If you can do that and get as much of the adhesive off in one piece, you can really clean that surface and make sure that it's ready for the the replacement we're gonna see what we can do to stick it down but I'm gonna to try to pull this adhesive off in one strip around it as much as I can alright so here we go with a pretty clean frame here uh, I scraped off most of it it occurred to me while I was doing it that what that ad adhesive probably do doubles as a waterproof seal so we're gonna make sure that we run new adhesive around there and a nice bead all around it so our new LCD sits in there while you're doing this it's very important to keep that little ribbon cable for the side button protected careful not as you're scraping careful to not snap it down or br break it off or anything um, I'm not really sure how to replace this but I'm gonna do a little more work to clean up this frame I'm gonna get some rubbing alcohol and a q-tip and run it around it a couple times to try and dissolve any remainder of that adhesive seal that was there okay q-tip dipped in rubbing alcohol was pretty good about in getting in that crack in there and getting any remaining residue of it out so what we're going to do now is we're going to attempt to reinstall the new LCD screen after we add a small layer of adhesive all right so you want to have one continuous bead of adhesive I use this 
all-purpose GO2 gel so it doesn't it's not watery like that crazy glue it's a nice gel and so I made a small bead around the whole uh, inner frame there and so the goal is to basically get some sort of a seal and it's probably not going to be as waterproof as it was before so we're going to do our best to try to get it in place there and we got to make sure the orientation of this frame is right before we put our new screen in all right so you want to make sure the two buttons are on the right because it sits on the watch face like this on your wrist so the two buttons are on the right so when you have the two buttons on the right we we'll make sure our hands are clean when we're touching the LCD but then this would go like this with the logo at the bottom and the button the two buttons one thing you want to do is on the new screen fold these down just a little bit Want to don't bend them too much, but they flex a little bit. Flex them down just a little bit so that you don't get them in the adhesive. All right, so we laid the new screen in there, and we'll clean up any adhesive. It's best not to touch the screen, especially if you've had adhesive. So you can use a spudger and just gently, just touch it. Just de gently tap it in the corners and maybe a little in the middle. Try and get it to sit in there, nice and solid. Try and let it set a little bit and uh, you can use small cloth or something to clean up any of the excess adhesive. All right, so as you're working in the new screen and getting it to sit properly and letting that adhesive mount uh, set, uh, if you're pushing it in and any adhesive comes out, you can use the tip of a spudger and kind of run it along and kind of get that gel out of there. Or um, I don't, the Q-tip doesn't work well because it's got little fibers and it will stick in the glue. So you can use maybe a little piece of toilet paper, especially if you can wet it with a little bit of rubbing alcohol and try and just go right around the edge and take off any of the excess adhesive and it'll clean it up. All right, so once you get the majority of it cleaned up and it's sitting in there pretty solidly, you can let it dry. It's a good time to clean your hands. I ended up using the tip of a... Uh, uh, paper clip very carefully to get in the groove but you got to be really careful with anything metal because you can scratch the screen or crack the glass and stuff so the best thing to use if you can is a plastic spudger especially if it's got a real sharp tip sometimes you can sharpen these up a little bit with some sandpaper and make it really get in the groove and the goal is to get it to sit in there pretty solidly and then not have too much adhesive leak around the edge and again, you want to make sure your orientation is right, that your two buttons are on the right side. All right, after that, you want to take it and ideally put down something soft that's clean. Take it, turn it over, and then put your tray back in. And you'll see that these little clips will make a nice little pop. Once you snap that little retaining tray back in, and you can see this is where the battery was with the adhesive. And uh, this, once it's in, you'll hear a nice little click and it will sit in there. And this, hold on, let me point here. You'll have this clip right here snap on, and this little clip here snap on as well. After that, you want to get your battery back in place right on the side over there. And get that ready and nice laying flat in there okay next step of reassembly after that is getting that little vibration module to go right back where it came out of again your plastic spudger is helpful here to align that get it stuck right back down in there the adhesive for me stuck stuck on the vibration module so it was able to go right back down in there you want to make sure that your three press fit ribbon cable connectors are somewhat aligned and you want to make sure nothing is folded underneath there. There should be four ribbon cables coming out around the side of it. All right, at this point, you really want to make sure your hands are clean and dry. Hit it with some rubbing alcohol or Goo Gone to get any of that solvent, get, get some solvent to get that adhesive off. So when you're working with the motherboard and these connectors, you don't get any residue on the actual motherboard or the connectors or anything. So once, once you have your the battery and the vibration module back in place and this aligned, you can get your three screws that you took out to get the motherboard back in. You can put the motherboard 
back where it goes. All right, so once you go around in kind of a circular pattern, they just need to be finger tight. They don't need to be cranked down and you don't want to strip them. So just do them finger tight and go around until they're all just finger tight and a little bit snug so that it's not going to loosen up. And as it, as it goes down, the other ones might loosen up. So you just want to go around and around until it's pretty solidly in there. All right, we're almost done. We're going to put our press fit connectors back on. And again, the best thing you can use for anything like this type of work are these plastic spudgers. They usually come with repair kits and anything plastic is usually good because if you slip, it's not going to really damage the board nearly as much as if you're using a screwdriver or anything metal. So we're going to push these press fit connectors back on and then we'll put the other half on. All right, after you put your press fit connectors on, you'll feel little pops. Again, you can best thing you can do is with your finger or that spudger, feel those little clicks and give them a little little rock, make sure they're actually make sure they're actually solidly on there. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get our base or our other half and we're going to connect it back into there. So before you do that, some videos had this as black and it's not the black part, it's this on mine, it's white. And you lift this little connector up. It's already it's already lifted, but you want to go in from the side and pop that little connector up. All right, this part was a little difficult. You want to wiggle. You want to get that connector started underneath that black part and wiggle it back and forth and work it as far in as it'll go, hopefully with your fingers. I didn't use tweezers because I was worried about crimping it or breaking any of the connections. So once you wiggle it back and forth, you want to use your spudger and flip that little white, in my case, white clip back down to hopefully lock it into place. And then you can put the back back on. All right, once you got the back back on, you can press the button on the side and hopefully it fires up. And now we finally have a completed process from going from this type of LCD back to something that appears to be functional, let's see. There we go. And again, you can clean up once it's back together, you can do a little more work to try to clean up that adhesive and stuff. And again, highly recommend avoid water because that gel probably won't have as much of a waterproof seal as the original, um, the original one. The replacement part I got off eBay didn't come with any sort of replacement adhesive strip, which is kind of unfortunate. It really would have been nice if they sent a nice adhesive uh, strip that you could set down there and feel like you got a good seal. But... That's that's basically the the second half of these tear down steps to actually get the LCD out and finally finally get it back together with a whole new LCD and that that actually will take any of those parts if you're trying to replace any of them through these steps hopefully you can get it apart and get it back together so thank you hopefully this is helpful Let's see